hands are dirty. Clothes thrown off the shreds. Bro, great talking to you, my friend. I think the last time you and I really had a chance to have a conversation was when I got to MC the... What was it? The uh, Toronto Jazz the, Festival, wasn't jazz it? Jazz Festival. That's it. That's right. You were performing there, man. Um, you have represented jazz music so great over the years, which is why I think it's a fantastic thing that you are hosting the Maple Blues Awards. How did this come about? Well, you know, this is actually, I, I'm, a, I'm a little ashamed to admit it, but this is my fourth time hosting the award since about... 2004 or five, I think that was the first time in it, before we moved to the prestigious Kerner Hall to celebrate Canada's uh, finest blues talent. Wow. So, um, yeah, I've been very fortunate to do it. And this year it's even more exciting because uh, this year I get to actually close the show with my band, my Toronto blues band of the last 20 years, Raul and the Big Time. So it's a very yeah. special one for me. What is it like to host something like this? Because I always try to tell people the actual first, and I've always checked this every year in the calendar, the first Canadian award show of really any kind is this one every year. What's it like to host it, man, the first award show of the year? Well, you know, I've hosted a couple other things. A few years ago, I hosted the Door Awards, Toronto's uh, Theater Awards. The thing about the, the Blues Awards, which makes them kind of special, is that, okay, we do give out 17 awards, so that's a lot of speeches, but the, the, the amazing thing is there's an all-star band that performs mm -hmm. on stage, the Stings and all that, but we have six or seven musical guests that perform during the show. So it's an incredible showcase of great music. I mean, you know, it's the blues. The focus of the evening really is about bringing people together from across Canada who enjoy the music and play the music. But really, it is about the music. So I love hosting it because my job is just to keep the darn thing moving, have a little bit of fun, and get to the next musical act because that's really what we're there to see. The other thing that's really cool is it's not just the artists who are uh, honored. It's actually guys who play certain instruments that are honored too. Yeah, we've got instrument uh, sort of awards for, you know, top harmonica player, blues guitar player, male vocalist, female vocalist. We have a great... Uh, kind of selection of awards. Then, of course, we have, you know, album of the year, producer of the year, song of the year, you know, the more traditional categories that come up each year. And, Absolutely. you know, what What I can say over all these years is that, you know, the the pool, the depth pool across Canada is getting deeper and deeper. All the mm -hmm. different regions across Canada have, you know, we've all got our sort of uh, our, our leaders, our mentors who've been in the scene for a long time, and there's a whole new wave of people coming up and doing it. It's really exciting to be a part of. Okay, so I'm going to throw this at you. I know it's, it might be tough. Do you know who the top nominees are? Just curious. Or even some of the nominees this year. Yeah, well, our big nominees, I believe they each have six. The two, the two people tied for six are two great Canadian blues artists who I've had the chance to know for a long time. And most recently, I haven't worked with one of them. One is from my uh, hometown. She's a great Sue Foley, who's nominated for six this year. And wow. she ties a Canadian legend, and a guy I got to play harmonica for the summer at a few festivals, the, the one and only Colin James. So you're wow. going to see Colin James and Sue Foley go head-to-head -head, uh, for, for the most number of awards against each other. And, I mean, you can't really beat it. Those are two of the greats uh, that are going head-to-head. -head. And then there's a whole host of other amazing nominees as well. Something else people should realize, too, and I think they still do this, after the show's done, after you've done your performance and everything else, isn't there always some kind of weird thing that happens, you know, at the end, like sort of like the pre-party kind of thing where somebody starts we call it, to it? There it is. Rudy, we call it the afterglow. <laughs> and it happens in the lobby of the Royal Conservatory of Music. And I can tell you, it's probably the highest alcohol sales that the uh, Royal Conservatory of Music ever has per year. Uh, fans, blues musicians. And then what happens is a great... Uh, harmonica player from Quebec, Guy Belanger. He's a great harmonica player. Guy is hosting the after party. So what happened, the afterglow jam. So people who've been nominated and won then perform in the lobby after we've done the main show. And the party just goes on and on and on. And it's, it's great, you know, and, and you get to see people play together. I mean, the fun thing about blues is, you know, I was just in New York last week and I got to sit in with a guy and play with a guy who I'd only seen records of and, and heard we'd never met before. But that's the wonderful thing about blues. You know, it's this, it's this music that people can play together or haven't played together before if you're at a certain level. 
So, um, you know, you're going to see combinations on, on Monday night that you've never seen before. And I was going to say, and you may never see again, it's a one-shot deal. Even though we do this every year, what you see and what you hear, you may never see and hear ever again. Exactly, because the nominees are always, uh, I mean, there's some people who are, you know, Matt Anderson, there's some incredible artists who, who we see nominated year after year, but the combination of people who are there each year is always a, it's always a different mix, and it's a huge amount of fun. Now, just curious, because um, as we speak, uh, it's a few days away from the award show. Are there still tickets available? Because I know these things sell out so quickly. You know, uh, I am not entirely sure if there are any available, but I would immediately reach out to uh, RCM the, the, or Royal yeah. Conservatory of Music, Kerner Hall, and the uh, Toronto Blue Society website, torontobluesociety.com, and see what's available. Before we go, what's going on with you for 2019? New music, tour, what's going on? I just put out my first jazz record with a new uh, duo I have with the great young Jesse Whiteley. It's called, our, our band is called Blue Standard. We put out a new album called A Good Thing, uh, just piano and voice. It's uh, going back to the roots of uh, some of my favorite uh, jazz music. Uh, that's been really exciting. And that's, that record has been out about for 10 days. And uh, I just got back from New York where I shot a guest spot on uh, one of my favorite shows called Blind Spot, which is on NBC. So that'll be on in a, in a probably six, six weeks, my episode will be on. So I'm very excited about that. And, uh, you know, I'm carrying on with my usual crazy juggle of uh, music and, <laughs> and TV and film and theater acting and somehow trying to do them at the same time and make a living. Man, thank you so much for representing the way you do for uh, Canadians. Look, before you go, though, if folks want to reach out to you, you know the you know the drill, man. When it comes to social media, website, Twitter, all that fun stuff, where do we go to follow you? Well, if you can spell my name, you're going to find me, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> either on Twitter or Instagram. I have one of these names where I don't have to worry about there being ten versions of me. You know, I feel sorry for the Mike Smiths at Instagram.com. No, mine's very easy. It's my name. You'll find me. R A O U L. B H A N E J A. That's Raul Beneja. Instagram, at Twitter, on Facebook. You'll find me. I'm there. Never going away, and that's the way we like it. Look, have fun hosting. Have fun at the award show. Uh, just have fun. And like I said, man, looking forward to all the great new music that you got coming out for 2019. My friend, we will talk soon. Take care. All the best. Rudy, thank you always for your support of Canadian artists and particularly Toronto musicians, uh, performers, and entertainers. We love doing what we do, and we love it when people get to hear about it. So thank you, sir. Take care, my friend. We'll talk to you. Bye-bye. I'm a high roller with a frown.